Hello again, um, it's Dr. Patricia Hilliard and mother of Whopper, Gwen Brown. Yes, big Whopper, five pounds. Yes, if you didn't hear that story, watch the first video um, two weeks ago, the video of the introduction. Well, we're, we are here to remind you that the Heart to Heart Women's Conference is happening this weekend. So you only have a few days left if you haven't registered register online um, at the usual places. I think it's posted here with this video. Um, we're talking about, picture this, this is the title. We're talking about the power of a God um, sanctified imagination and the power that is in that imagination. Um, so we want, so Gwen and I were talking and was like, well, we used to have a really vivid imagination. Yes. Gwen had a really vivid one. <laughs> I can remember my brother and I spending hours with our stick horses. He was Roy Rogers on Trigger. I was Del Evans and her horse, Buttermilk. And we were truly catching every bad guy and living that life of a hero and a heroine. And it was so easy back then to see ourselves in those roles. What happened, Patricia? Well, Gwen, this is what I would say to you. You're still catching bad guys. <laughs> Every time Gwen sees someone where the enemy has taken a hold of him, she goes right in there and she says, that fear can't come over you. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. So she's still lassoing those bad Praise guys and, and catching them and putting them in Jesus' prison. Amen. So. And, and those that don't know who Roy Rogers and Dell Evans are or were, um, Google it. They were on every Saturday morning. So um, some of you have seen my picture with Wonder Woman. Um, <laughs> I, I don't look much like it today. Um, um, I didn't actually fantasize that. I didn't imagine that. I didn't have any little vision of that. That just came about through, um, who knows, I got a Wonder Woman shirt. Uh, but I did it because I take that, I dress in that outfit to go to Honduras to the children's hospital where the cancer ward is and the, the little children just love to see um, the team and I dressed up in these superhero costumes and they they get right into the play of it. So one one week I wore it to our Daisy Girls here at New Hope, the kindergarten and first grade girls. And my Wonder Woman um, top has a, a, cape? a cape, yes. So I can actually do this and the cape flies. So I came in in my Wonder Woman outfit, um, Wonder Woman socks, boots, the, the, the arm things, the whole thing. And those little girls turned and their mouths were just open and they said, oh, Miss Patricia, can you fly? <laughs> I thought Miss Jerry was gonna lose it. But that is the power of the imagination. What, yes. what happened to us? I, yes. don't, I, don't ever, I don't operate in that anymore. I don't either. But we're going to, right? Amen. So what happened? I believe that the enemy is out to, again, pervert our imaginations. And uh, we allow him that, that power. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's going to happen. I feel in my heart there's women that, say, that have heard and now they imagine. Maybe they haven't even heard it, but they imagine they're ugly. They're worthless. They, they can't even, I knew one woman that couldn't say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because she felt so unworthy. This is the way she saw herself. And it is time we're taking back that territory. We're taking back and exchanging mm -hmm. that death lie for the life of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And this, this time is going to be powerful, not only for you, but we walk it first. <laughs> yes. I, I, I. 100, 100%. People have spoken into many lives, mm -hmm. things that have killed dreams, that yes. have killed your imagination. Yes. So maybe you were uh, told as a young child, and this probably not as much in this generation now, um, but if, if people, if little kids colored and they colored the sky, 
uh, with a purple cloud or uh, orange grass. It was uh, grass is green and skies are blue. And anyone who had any kind of imagination who was letting that beautiful picture come, come to life, they were sort of crushed. And so in that, our whole imagination, well, if, I, if this is not right, then anything I imagine is not right. So you said to someone uh, at one point in time, um, I, I really want to be a pilot. And they looked at you and said, uh, you could never be a pilot. Uh, you, you're not smart enough to know how to fly. You're not tall enough. Um, any and all of those kinds of things that just crush our dreams before they even really get off the ground. And sometimes when we're um, adults, we don't really realize that this has happened. We just kind of go along day by day and we don't think because we're like, we have lots of responsibilities. We have the exactly. life that we have right now. So we don't think about those things that God planted um, in our hearts a long time ago. Um, the first week when I told you, I said that doing this study, nothing else I've, I have studied has exceeded the transformational change in me that this study has done. Um, I did not remember until I started studying this and I was talking to my sister about it and she said, well, Patricia, you used to line up all of our chairs in the, we had a little table in the playroom and we had a little desk. She said, you would line up all of the chairs and the tables and you would make all of us be the kids and you were always the teacher. <laughs> I did not remember that. I had no memory of that. She said I would round up all the neighborhood kids and make them all sit in there while I taught. Evidently, they had a good time because they all came. came so I must have been a good teacher even then. But what I'm saying is I had no re no remembrance of that. It's by God's grace that I got where I right. am because I didn't remember that dream. But we want to we wanna let you have a time where you can put down the barriers, where you can put down the walls, and we can speak and we can say, Holy Spirit, revive us, revive those dreams, revive our imaginations for all the things that you said we are and that we can be. Exactly. Because in that comes hope. Yes. And in hope comes faith. Mm -hmm. And I think today of all the things we need, we need to be anchored uh, in that strong hope, that confident expectation that brings a strong faith. Yes. All I can say, ladies, is dare to dream. Mm -hmm. um, it's time that we take back, and I, I pray that at this conference, that you know that you're in a, in a safe place, a secure place, where no one is going to judge or ridicule. This is between you and the Lord, but dare to have the dreams and the desires that he's placed within you. So Gwen, what would you say to someone who would say, well, I've, I have heard or I've been taught or whatever, that imagination should be cast down. Mm. Because that is a scripture, cast down. Vain. Imagine, well, I don't even know if it says vain. I learned that too, but you know when I actually looked it up, I didn't see it. Cast down imaginations that will exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at what imaginations do, because we have them, whether exactly. they're good or bad. What imaginations do I have that is keeping me from what the Word of God, the knowledge of God, the word, what the Word of God says Amen. about me? That's right. So, you know, the New Age movement actually stole it. Well, yes. It, it, the imagination was God's plan. He gave us imagination. Um, I don't think he even, I don't, you know, I think about it. He could not even have created the world without imagination. Exactly. God had to have, he said, we're made in his image. He had to have imagination to think, what would a mountain look like? What would a horse look like? Uh, what would a zebra look like? What is a, what is a, a daisy going to look like in a rose? He had to have an imagination exactly. for that. And we have that God same, God given imagination. So um, this is not about new age. This is not about visualization. And I think you covered it last week with it's not about name it and claim it. No. But this is about what seeing the power in the God-given imagination taking us 
through, first of all, right now where we are, through this period of time, without depression, without fear, but freeing us to, to see what God placed in our hearts, in our DNA, that maybe is a dream or an imagination that somebody has shot down. Yes. But God says, I'm not done yet. Right, yeah. and, and you might have forgotten it, just like yeah, Patricia absolutely. had to be reminded by right. her sister. So we're going to say, let's take back what the enemy has stole. Yes. Join us at the New Hope Heart to Heart Women's Conference this weekend, September 11th and 12th. If you haven't registered, register, because we are going to do social distancing. We're going to be very careful, and uh, that makes it limited seats. So if you haven't registered, try right now as soon as this video is over. So we're going to say that our, we are asking the Holy Spirit to be so present that he's the leader, he's our guide, he's our teacher, and we're asking him to revive the power of our imaginations that we can be all that he has designed us to be. Amen. you have anything else, Glenn? Yes. Ladies, this is from the contemporary English version of Philippians 4.8. Finally, my friend, keep your minds on whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is holy, whatever is friendly, and whatever is proper. Don't ever stop thinking on what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. We will see you there, ladies. Looking forward to Amen. it. 7 p.m. Friday, September the 11th. See you then.